Inspirational Creatives, episode 299, brought to you by the Inspirational Creatives app, which you can find on your favourite smartphone app store. Download the free Inspirational Creatives app to access every single episode from this podcast for free, as well as some exclusive bonus material. Welcome to Inspirational Creatives. I'm your host, Rob Lawrence. Join me every Friday as I chat with successful artists, producers, and creative entrepreneurs who share powerful stories and strategies. They can help you to create the life that you want. Listen each week as these inspirational creatives show you how to take your creativity to the next level. You'll learn how to create a sustainable business that inspires others and gives you the financial freedom and lifestyle that you want. Thanks for listening. Make sure you sign up at inspirationalcreatives.com to get free exclusive bonus material. And now on with the show. Rob here and a very warm welcome to the 299th episode of Inspirational Creatives. If this is the first time you've ever listened to this podcast, welcome, a very warm welcome and a belated happy new year. This is a podcast for those seeking creative excellence and for those who see themselves as creative people. One of the most frequently asked questions in the inspirational creative space, which over the last few years I've spent a lot of time in, is how can I create a living doing what I love? Or some variation of that, for example, how do I make a living from my own art? Or how can I make a living from my creative work or art? Well, today I've got a nice surprise for you all the way from Canada. We're going to shift gears again in this episode with my wife taking the mic, interviewing a relatively new artist by the name of Sarah Tomlinson. She's from Vancouver, a place I've always wanted to visit, curiously. And in a similar fashion to 297, episode 297 at the end of last year, where my wife Sandra interviewed two highly creative and successful artists, Kira and Elisa, an episode which, judging by the feedback and numbers, has gone down very well. So if you haven't had a chance to listen to that one yet, you might want to queue that one up for some time today. Anyway, at the end of last year, Sandra, my wife, conducted a number of online live streamed interviews on the business of creativity. And today I'm going to share with you one of those interviews and the audio from that chat. And I feel it's a really, really good one. You'll have to forgive the quality. It's clear, but there are a few little gremlins on the line. It's a live chat, as I said, but it's certainly listenable and you're going to get value out of the next 30 minutes if creating art is your thing and you're looking at making a living from your creative endeavours. So in this interview, Sandra and Sarah explore where Sarah's inspiration comes from and how she cultivates and nurtures her inner artist. But they also explore somewhat how Sarah has managed to take her art as a process of healing from abusive relationships all the way through to now making a living from her creative work. I believe you're really going to enjoy this episode just as much as any of the past 298 episodes. So sit back, relax, and if you haven't got a cuppa to hand, hit pause, go make one and enjoy. Hello, we are live. Um, welcome everybody to Inspirational Creatives and a really big welcome to Sarah Tomlinson, who is calling in from Canada. Canada, yeah. So, Vancouver, Canada. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, morning for you over on the other side of the ocean. Yes. <laughs> Sarah um, is an artist and I think it's probably best if you wouldn't mind doing a kind of just a, a description of what, what it is you do. For sure. Um, so my name is Sarah Tomlinson, but I uh, have an artist alias. So my artist name is Girl With Many Secrets. And, um, you know, I say that I'm a feminist artist and I love creating art that mostly shows, um, you know, feminine strength and embodiment of that, you know, that power and beauty we have inside of us. That's great. And that's one of your pieces right yes, behind you, I, isn't I it? I thought I would uh, have this as a, it's a pretty display in the background. So this is my newest painting. She's still a work in progress about halfway, but it's kind of a nice background. <laughs> yes, <laughs> she's beautiful. Yes, <laughs> so have you been, have you been painting for long? Probably not in, uh, in terms of a lot of other artists. So I have just passed my three year anniversary um, of, you know, kind of discovering art. I was doing um, a lot of pencil crayon drawings and adult coloring books for years. Then I went to community classes a few years ago for pencil crayons. But then I kind of like, I never had the confidence to draw my own picture. I just never 
really occurred to me that that would work. And then one day I just had this like spontaneous, like draw off the page. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I drew something on my own. And I was like, oh, that felt really good. I'm going to do more. <laughs> so I started out as a sketch artist with pencil crayons and I explored some charcoal and, and chalk pastel. And, uh, and then I was, you know, determined to be a better painter. So I've been painting for about half of that time now. Amazing. Have you always been this creative since being a child? Um, I I probably, I think so. I know, um, you know, my mom, I remember her setting up, you know, in the kitchen on the, um, when she got home from work and she'd start cooking dinner or something or bake on the weekends. And then she'd spread out, you know, all of my coloring stuff on the kitchen table. And I would just be doing my, you know, coloring thing while you know, keeping her company. So I remember doing that for hours and hours as a child. But then, you know, I also have this um, fascination with science. And uh, so I was actually drawn more to the sciences in school. Mm -hmm. And and that actually requires a lot of creativity uh, in the mind and and thinking about different processes. So I actually have a weird like left and right brain marriage inside of me, which is fairly um, a little bit rare. But so it just leads to a lot of creative approaches to paintings but also I love preciseness in there so I think I've always been creative I just expressed it actually through the sciences first (laughs) amazing yeah Yeah, work for da Vinci so yeah uh... that's right why I I taught math for um, many years and there is actually a lot of geometry and shapes and drawing in math yeah definitely (laughs) I relate because I too have a maths background as well I did that at university you say you are a kind of a feminine artist and you know you like to do things that really embody that can you just talk a bit more about that and what that really means to you sure I, I I almost think that when I started painting or or doing art I actually did more nude art earlier on um you know with a lot of my chalk pastel work and it was almost I it was at the time where I was kind of discovering I was in an abusive relationship and I left and it was almost like the search for connection with my own body again and my own self-love and my own sensuality my own femininity which was a lost identity to me I think that's what I was doing at the time And so as, you know, my art has progressed, I've actually kind of discovered my own sensuality and and, and feminine nature again and felt comfortable with her. So I actually embody a lot of those practices as part of my healing as well. So, uh, you know, when I'm painting (laughs) or before I paint, you know, I I dance, um, you know, I move my body, I get into my feminine flow. Even if we're in quarantine, I, I... I like doing my makeup. I I like dressing up and just that full embodiment of, you know, whatever feels good for that female expression. Um, So I I actually really, you know, from waking to sleeping, I I embody, you know, that feminine power and strength throughout the day. That makes sense, actually, because a lot of your paintings are quite flowy, aren't they? And you did the swirl series. Yes. It's all about energy, really. I, I cannot, as people say, you know, oh, they're, they look like they're moving all the time. And to me, yeah. it's that energy that's always flowing through us. So I love kind of capturing that up in my work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, you can really feel it. Yes. Yeah. That's great. I love hearing that. So. I can't remember how I came across you. Just one of those random Facebook kind of incidences. I think so. <laughs> yeah, meant to be maybe. <laughs> Yeah, but I do remember you once saying how you know that a painting is finished. Yeah. It's when you feel the the story has been told mm-hmm. of the painting. Do you approach each piece with a story in mind or do you just kind of let it flow? Um, I suppose I let it flow. I kind of let, in some ways I do. I have a painting on my art desk right now where I had the story in mind ahead of time. And, and in that case, I'll build sort of or compile a a digital image from multiple inspirational photos and kind of compile it in a photo editor ahead of time and then there's a painting behind me where I just I feel really really I find you know um, a photo inspiration on the internet and I just she captivates me and I kind of want to capture her energy and my colors and then the story kind of tells itself through the painting So sometimes it starts with a story and goes into an image and sometimes it starts with an image and then she tells a story. So that's the case with the painting behind me. She's kind of telling the story 
as I paint her. But I love detail in my work. I love adding lines. And so I, 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 there's times when I just need to cap myself. And I'm like, you've told her story, you know, but your paint rushed <laughs> out. It's time to start something new. But so I do have yeah. to cut myself <laughs> off because I can I can paint my flowy lines for, for life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You mentioned earlier as well, discovering when you were coming out of an abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. Did you find that the just being creative, the whole creative process, did that help with your healing and help you move on? And yeah, would you like to talk about that a bit more? Oh, for sure. Um, it definitely was. You know, I was in a, a bit of a strange uh, relationship. So it was uh, an open relationship at the time. And so I actually started art when I broke up from my last boyfriend, but was still in my main relationship. Um, <laughs> and I, and, and both were traumatic experiences. So the, I, I started healing from the abusive boyfriend in my abusive marriage through my art. And, and it was actually through art, any kind of art or any kind of human expression, like writing or music or any kind of extension that flows out of us is a connection to our own inner spirit and, and, and soul. So I really think mm. my soul emerged through art when I need when it needed to. And, you know, it was through starting art in my abusive marriage that I really was talking to my soul for the first time and probably over a decade. Um, so that marriage was quite long. And I think it was through doing art because uh, for three or four months that I actually realized that I was in an abusive marriage because I didn't figure it out until a few months till the end. Uh, it was one of those things where the veil was taken off after 13 <laughs> years in shock. But yeah, so it's really just a chance to talk and reconnect with your inner spirit again. Art is really just an extension and flow of an artist's soul. And so, yeah, I, I definitely healed. I've healed trauma. I have my kind of darker paintings and darker art from earlier on but it also you know they that's why I say I, I I paint from healing to empowerment so now I'm more in more of my empowerment stage uh, and you can kind of see that behind me so it's really yeah connecting with your soul understanding where she's at and expressing all of those emotions and feelings in a safe way and processing them so it's definitely a part of healing hasn't been the only one I've 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 worked on but it's it's a huge part yeah <laughs> yeah that's amazing I think it is it's so important I think to have those creative outlets mm -hmm. I mean certainly when I when I was coming out of a marriage as well over a decade ago I discovered journaling yeah. and I, I kind of journaled my way through it and wrote poetry which I never had done before which oh, was kind of, kind of messy but mm. <laughs> but necessary oh time, absolutely but, yeah for sure yeah <laughs> what does creativity mean to you would you say Creativity is, I suppose, uh, it's a mixture of, you know, built on talent and skill over time. You know, somebody asked me or asked online, do you consider yourself an expert in your field? And I actually think that's impossible as an artist to be an expert because each time you're kind of learning and growing. Um, but creativity to me is about expansion. It's about downloads. You know, I believe energy and, and consciousness and spirit extend um, outside of our body. And mm. so it's actually just harnessing from our environment and also harnessing from yourself. So that's art mm. is like a very much a universal expression to me because it's a combination of my own soul and whatever energy and feeling I'm, I'm picking up from the world. And yeah. it's kind of poured into art. So, yeah, creativity. In a nutshell, it's a combination of, you know, skills, talent, experience, downloads, and my own soul expression. And just letting it, trusting yourself to flow out. You know, in my meditations, I, I set the intention, you know, every night and every morning that I am open to receive. And, and I am like a conduit and flow for, you know, universal expression. So uh, I never have to worry about what I'm painting. It always just seems to come up. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's beautiful. I love that. Yeah, I, I remember reading um, a Liz Gilbert book, Big Magic, I think, and she talked about the creative process. Mm. And she says that these ideas are just floating around. And it's kind of, you know, if you're in the right place at the right time, you'll catch one. And if you don't do anything with it, it kind of goes off again and somebody else gets it. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, it just happens, you know, throughout humanity, ideas will pop up, um, you know, around the same time, you know, before we even had phones and communication, two people around the world have the same idea, a novel idea. And, you know, there's a reason for that. They caught the same, you know, download. It's really fascinating. So. <laughs> And were you supported yeah. creatively as a child, you know, through the school system? Uh, I suppose if I had, if I had taken that opportunity to do that, I, I would say um, I probably went into the wrong creative field, you know, in the uh, kind of between high school and elementary school where, you know, my parents, it's, it's all an experimentation when you're growing up. My parents, um, you know, suggested I go into music because my brother was in music. And I love dancing. I do not understand music at all, though. I do not understand <laughs> making music. I do not understand beats. The, you know, the teacher was constantly like, tap your foot to the beat. And I'm like, what beat? I don't know. And I faked it for three years. <laughs> and that kind of turned me off. And then in high school, I went, you know, into wildlife studies. And, and I was fascinated with animals and biology. So it, in some ways, I was supported in the wrong creative field. But I always, you know, if we always hear, you know, what's meant for you will find you. So art found me anyway. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's great. Do you ever encounter any blocks, any creative blocks? And like, if you do, what do you do to get around them? For sure. Um, I've definitely had some blocks. And, you know, I, I thought about two sort of major ones that I've had. And one was on faces. I have to say yeah. behind me, I've kind of worked through that block, but you know, for the longest time, I can't do faces. Faces were hard was what was it going through my mind and which was not true because I was able to do a painting with a face while I had that limiting belief. And that painting was the first original painting I sold. It's the most popular print I have right now. And so, you know, there was a hint in my mind that if I could figure out doing faces, I could captivate my audience and, and express the message I want to tell more. And so I knew I had to change that limiting belief. And uh, I just rewrote it in a way that was believable, that inspired growth. So I, I always said that I wanted to get to the point where I can, you know, do faces well to express what I wanted mm. to do. And I'm not very fast at them, but I am, you know, doing it better. I don't worry about speed. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I was I couldn't, you know, believably say that I can do face as well. Like there's a point where your ego just can't get onto a new affirmation. And so I created an affirmation ladder for myself. And so my next, you know, I, I banned myself from saying I can't do faces. And I said, uh, my new affirmation was, I bet I could do a face if I took my time. Mm. And, and, and I can get on board with that. You know, our minds can get on board with that ladder. And I, yeah. I did do my next face and it took a long time, but I did it. And that is still a very popular painting of mine. And that was enough to get me going to inspire more. So my next affirmation was I'm getting better at faces, you know, also something that we can get on board with in our mind with that ladder. I felt more comfortable with trying out my first portrait painting. I felt comfortable enough to attend art school classes, you know, before the COVID shut down. Uh, I had mm -hmm. actually planned on doing my first half of this year in art school, in art mm -hmm. classes on the weekends and at night. I only got through a few of them, but even like one or two portrait classes was enough to understand the geometry, but it took a little bit more confidence. So you, you just never know what happens in your life when you change a block because it, mm. it just took me on this you know month-long road um to, to developing my face work so that was like how I restructured a limiting belief and then the other one is just like an artist confidence thing where all artists have a unique style you know we all have something that brings the world and I, I just had a limiting belief of a who wants to buy nude art I don't know if people want and and they do sell a little bit slower than, you know, closed art. So I love doing nude art. Do people want to see it? And I also had a limiting belief of like, well, people like pink art in their <laughs> homes because the homes now are very neutral. They're very stone colored and earth tones. And I can do earth tones, but I don't really do them often. I, my favorite palette is behind me, purple and blue. And that's pretty much a constant expression. 
do people want to pink, you know, put pink in their home? <laughs> and I'm like, and you know, it just got to the point of like, well, this isn't going away. This is what my soul is here to express. And I'm just going to be a trendsetter and I'm going to love my art <laughs> and people will love it because I love it. And it's true. And, and it's slowly, you know, they, they are people, every time I post, you know, a painting, people are like, I love the colors. I'm like, I do too. <laughs> so, you know, my, my biggest lesson yeah. there is if you're an artist, learn to love your art first. And yeah. that infectious energy will translate yeah. to your audience and people will want mm. a painting from you because you love it. That's massive. Yeah, <laughs> that's so important. I am. Um... I remember I did photography for a while and um, I got caught by the blocks and like, I'm not good enough. And I, I focused too much on um, probably like selling my art rather than the actual art itself, right. which is the wrong focus. <laughs> yeah. I've actually realized the less that I like try to sell it, the more sales I have. I also love your affirmation ladder. I mean, I've I've been going through this whole year, like rewriting affirmations, like reprogramming my mm-hmm. brain. Um, but I love the way of just doing it in steps to make it manageable because some of them can seem so big. And you're like, you're saying these things and you don't quite believe it. You, you can feel that you don't believe it, but you need to feel it to make it change. So Yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't know if it actually exists or the concept, but I kind of made a limiting belief ladder just because... I say that we're, we're, we're a couple different parts. We're our ego self and we're our soul self. And, you know, the beauty comes when you can convince both of them to get on board with something. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the belief ladder was something to get my ego on board with what my soul wanted to do. So. I love that. <laughs> yeah. So it sounds like you have um, quite a strong spiritual practice behind your art um Mm. can you talk us a bit through that what is it that you do every day um I I suppose it's a bit more of like a weekly routine and then I have a daily routine I try to get out in nature at least once a week you know we we hit winter (laughs) in Vancouver and I I I should get out there I haven't been in a little while but you know in the summer and spring I'm I'm probably out in nature probably about three times a week And it just feels like such a cleanse. And when I come back, that creativity has just like skyrocketed. You know, I fully believe that I've like gotten rid of the negative energy and I am now open to receive, you know, those positive downloads. Um, So yeah, nature is a big part of that. And then in my daily routine, you know, I have a nighttime and routine and a morning routine. So my morning routine, I have um, different affirmation tracks that I listen to so every day I have a gratitude affirmation track and then about every second day I write down after that I write down five things I'm especially grateful for and then five things I'm grateful for in the future so a visualization practice and I'll actually take time to close my eyes and visualize what's happening uh you know I do some breath work in the morning uh, as well as some mantras And then I also like to kind of get up and and stretch and move my body. Mm. Um, I don't think it's actually yoga (laughs) that I do. It's kind of a combination of yoga, stretching and dance, just to kind of get things moving and flowing. I like to kind of, you know, dress up in the morning a little bit and then listen to more exciting music uh, to kind of embody, you know, that success or empowerment feeling. So it's kind of my morning. And then at nighttime, I have my routine, a deeper meditation. So I usually do longer meditations at night or around 30 minutes to really kind of connect and align. And then I kind of do a journal dump <laughs> of whatever I'm, you know, whatever needs to come down on paper. So that's kind of my practice. And before painting, I'll also kind of just center and align as well. So yeah, it's really important. I say the job of a, a really good artist is really just to be aligned and to receive those downloads and to receive the messages from your soul so yeah <laughs> wow it'd be great if um if this could be taught in schools in oh that way, goodness yeah how different the world would be <laughs> yeah i know there there would be um tons of you know more productivity more relaxedness less aggression I've, I've taught in very aggressive schools so if we could get you know students on board with you know, even five minutes of meditation a day, I think it would change the world. (laughs) Amazing. Obviously, you're selling your work now online. But when you started going public with your pictures, was that the intention for you to be like a full time artist selling your work? Or was it kind of like a hobby that you were kind of promoting? 
Um, no, I definitely, it was always my intention to be a full-time artist. Um, you know, when I finished my second piece three years ago, I just like this is it. I've been the wrong profession. I was a high school teacher at the time, like, no, I'm going to be an artist. <laughs> <laughs> this is happening. So I definitely wanted to get to the point of, you know, selling art. It does take a while. It takes a while to find your style, to build a portfolio, to figure out how on earth to make prints or, you know, ship a painting. It, it's a slow process. So it's, a, it, you know, I say art careers are different than other careers because it is a process. <laughs> other people are, you know, can can seem to quantum leap in, in you know, income and, and stages in certain careers. But yeah, artists just have to take their time, build their portfolio. But it was always kind of my intention and, and goal to get to where I am today, which is being a full-time artist. And, it, and it's something I love. I, I still love just creating art and doing it. Like if there was no money involved, I would still do it. Yes. <laughs> and that's the most important thing. Like you say, you have to you love it before you can do it. Absolutely. Do you have any advice for any anyone thinking about doing it other than the fact that obviously you need to love it? <laughs> um, for sure. I I would say don't limit yourself into any kind of like I'm gonna be this kind of artist. I I thought I wouldn't be an artist with a style because I had such a broad range at the beginning, but it does take time to learn your style and to figure that out. You know, it's this long process of alignment with your artistic self. So I never thought I would be like a formula artist or anything. And yet this summer I found a painting style that is definitely part of my repertoire. That is a very formula painting and people love it. I love it. And it's not the only art I do, but yet I, you know, I said I wasn't going to be a formula artist and yet I have a formula style as a part of my art. Mm -hmm. So I just say, you know, don't restrict yourself um, and don't compare to what other people are doing. There's so much in the art community that says it's okay to do this. It's not okay to do this. You know, there's a part of, you know, the art community that says standing by your painting and posting it is bad because it should be about the art. <laughs> and I like, oh, I do that all the time. So, <laughs> you know, it's called getting visible with your art and being proud of it. Uh, so I'd say don't, don't listen to all the babble about what's okay and what's not okay to do and just do what feels good for you it's your art it's and an art is so personal so I just say you know do what feels good for you don't worry if it feels like it's taking a long time mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> just take your time and enjoy it and and there's been times where I haven't felt like doing art for three weeks at a time um, and there's a reason for that and, you know, during those times, I found my soul searching for more learning and growth mm -hmm. um, in other places. So I would just say, you know, go with the flow, go with your own personal calls and do what feels good for you. But definitely get out there. Even if people are just starting to do art for fun, create an art page, post it. You just never know. Like, mm. I, I didn't know when I would start selling my work. I was just posting it and enjoying it. And then that fateful day came when somebody messaged me and said, can I have a print of that? <laughs> you know, and they're like, yes, let me figure out how to make a print and I will get back to you. But yes, you know, just take your time. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Such a personal process. Do you, did you ever feel like really vulnerable sharing it with the world? And do you have any tips of overcoming oh, goodness, that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of my paintings is called Courage and I it just recently sold last month but I, I painted it after my first art show artists their art is bearing our soul to the world and and at first that is so scary <laughs> are people gonna like it are what are people gonna think da, da, da. and the whole process of getting comfortable with sharing mm. such an intimate part of yourself and having that be normalized is such a courageous feat and I think anybody any writer musician you know, visual artists could probably relate to that. And then it kind of normalizes. But for maybe two years, I felt scared every single time I posted a piece of art <laughs> or something. And then I just shook the whole time during my first art mm -hmm. show, right? But then you learn to start talking about it. And yeah, you learn to be comfortable. But yeah, it took probably about two years to be okay with standing beside me. <laughs> we just have to keep going. <laughs> You just have to keep, yeah, keep going, keep normalizing. It's like, how do people become 
normalized to doing the scary jobs like washing skyscrapers, yeah. right? Just, just keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Yeah. That's brilliant. Thank you so much. Where can people find out more about you and see some of your lovely art? Yeah, so um, my my art name is Girl With Many Secrets. So, you know, if you type it in uh, to the website, Girl With Many Secrets, um, it does come up on Instagram. It comes up on Facebook. I am most active on Instagram and I love sharing other content and stuff on there. So I say if you want to catch me at my fullest, find me on Instagram. And then it's girlwithmanysecrets.ca and I'm just building in the process of building a more professional website that's going to come out in a couple of months with my own online shop. Um, but I'm on Etsy and Redbubble as well. But you can all find that um, on Instagram on my bio link. Amazing. Yeah, Girl With Many Secrets. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you about that. Where, the name, where did it come from, Girl With Many Secrets? Yeah, again, it's just, I. that's why I say listen to what you want to do with it um because around my third art piece i was just like and it is actually sort of a a really abstract portrait of myself and the name came and i was like i think i need to be called girl with many secrets it was just something that i wanted to name my art and i knew it was strange (laughs) but i just i just needed to do it so i listened to myself um but it's because i i say that you know i do art for women and it's Mm. not really I'm not attached to it like I wanted to Mm. take my ego out of my art because I really Mm. really feel because I you know download these feelings and emotions and I've been through healing empowerment I want to express Mm. my art for the journey of you know I'd like to say all women but that's probably not true I want to say most women (laughs) and and women see (laughs) you know so I want to express it for them it's for us it's for women. Mm. So um, I kind of just really wanted to generalize that expression. And women tell me, you know, I see myself in that piece. And I'm like, yeah, mm. that's what you're supposed <laughs> to feel. It just makes my day. That's, that's the goal mm. of Girl With Many Secrets is to make art for women. So. Well, I definitely recommend checking out your work because you. it is beautiful. And um, yeah, but thank you so much for your time today. And um yeah have a lovely rest of your day it's the morning there isn't it so um and we'll see everybody very soon so bye bye (laughs) wow what a chat i hope you enjoyed that as much as i did listening to it and clearly as sandra did chatting with sarah what an incredible journey sarah has been on too as a survivor of domestic violence not only turning that positively into art but also now creating a living from that work and as a part of her own healing process I love that Sarah talks about following your inspiration and that creativity is about expansion and growing and healing ourselves in a way and that it's important that we don't restrict ourselves as artists or as creatives by defining ourselves in any way, but rather offering yourself the opportunity to find your own style by doing what feels good to you. I also love the fact that Sarah talks about what is meant for you will find you. And I definitely believe that is true in so many areas of life, in work, relationships, in our creative vocations, whatever they may be. My biggest takeaway, however, today from Sarah's chat with Sandra was the potential that's hidden behind our own creative blocks. When we offer ourselves an opportunity to slowly yet surely overcome our own blocks, there's an opportunity for personal growth right there. If you didn't manage to catch Sarah's details earlier, it's Girl With Many Secrets. That's where you'll find her on Instagram, a girl with many secrets, where you'll be able to see pictures of the art that Sarah was talking about. You'll also find links in the episode show notes. Head on over to inspirationalcreatives.com. Click on the episodes button and have a look for episode 299. And how about that? Hey, episode 299. What a great way to end this series from that creative spark to selling your art. It somewhat sums up the whole series in many ways for me. The big episode 300 next 300. So stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast in your favorite podcast listening app and download the Inspirational Creatives app free from your favorite smartphone app store where you can find every single episode, every single previous episode of this podcast. You'll find that there for free. Thanks to my wife, Sandra, for an excellent interview. Thank you, Sarah, for being an awesome guest. And thank you for listening. I'll chat to you soon. 
Thanks for listening. Nothing beats the stories and advice of an expert to help you raise your creative game. I would love to know what you thought about today's episode, so don't forget to subscribe in iTunes where you can rate and review the show. If you like this episode, I invite you to share it on Facebook or Twitter with the one person you know who will benefit from the wisdom shared here today. You can find the show notes on inspirationalcreatives.com forward slash podcast. If you have a burning question or a great idea for a guest, head on over to inspirationalcreatives.com forward slash contact where you can connect with me there. 